All right, now that we have understood how to conditionally render elements, in this video, let's take a look at the ng4 directive, which helps us to render a list of elements. Again, the ng4 directive is pretty much like the for loop in any programming language. The only difference is that here we render HTML instead of executing some logic. So let's understand the usage with an example. First, I'm going to create a new property. This is going to be public colors equal to an array of colors. Red, blue, green, and yellow. Using the ng4 directive, let's render a heading tag for each one of these colors in the array. And here's the syntax. I'm gonna begin with a container tag like div for example. And to the div tag, we attach the ng4 directive. And this directive again, begins with an asterisk. And on the right hand side, let color of colors. Now here colors is nothing but our data source, which is the array of colors. And then we declare a variable using the let keyword, which is a ES2015 feature. And then the variable name is color. So color will refer to each item in the array during the iteration. Next, within the div tag, we can have the h2 tag where we bind the color using interpolation. So here is how this syntax works. It finds colors, which is the data source for the loop. In each iteration of the loop, color refers to one item in the array. First iteration, it is red. Second iteration, it is blue. Third, green. And the last iteration, it is yellow. And for each of these values, the h2 tag gets rendered. So if we save this and take a look at the browser, you can see the list of colors, red, blue, green, and yellow. Now we can also extend the syntax to access the index during each iteration. So over here, put a semicolon and then index as i, and then bind the alias i in the h2 tag. So now if we save this and take a look at the browser, you can see the index along with the colors. Keep in mind, the index will start from zero. All right, now just like the index, we also get a couple more keywords to use specific to the ng4 directive. I can say first as f and then bind f. Now this will indicate if the element is the first element in the array or not. So if we save this, and take a look at the browser, it says true followed by three false. So this is the first element in the array, but the other three are not. Similarly, we can also have last as L and then bind L. Now this outputs true for the last element in the iteration. So if we save this and take a look at the browser, it says true for the very last item, which is yellow, but for the first three items, it says false. And just like first and last, we can also have odd and even indications. So if I start with odd as O and then bind O, you can see that it says true for odd items in the iteration. So remember, this is 0, 1, 2, 3. So 1 and 3 are true, which are odd, but 0 and 2 are false, which are even. So if I change odd to even, so even as E, and then bind E, save this and take a look at the browser. It says true, false, true, false. Zero and two are true, whereas index one and three are false. Now, basically you might want to use the ng if directive coupled with these first, last, odd, and even values. Maybe to set a specific class or a style, or add and remove elements from the DOM. All right, so that is it about the ng4 directive. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.